As always, I have no plan and am just winging it. You actually want to be in the video this time instead of running away? Oh, thank you. Thank you for the free content. Behold, white man here. God, I hate touching meat. <laughs> Depends on the meat. <laughs> Some people write scripts for their content. Chicken. Chicken. Chick. Chick in. Chicken. Chicken. Chick in. Chick in. Chick in. Chick in. Chicken. 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 Dog. Yes, good to see you. Chicken. About a year ago. Two years? March 10th. Over a year ago, I was attempting to start a series of cooking videos. The first video in the series I made, I mentioned, hey, you don't gotta season the chicken if you're, you know, tired or whatever. If you want to skip a step, go for it. I got bullied about it on the internet. I deserve it. This time, however, uh, I've had some character growth, I've had some development on my own, and I'm gonna show you the, my updated chicken burrito recipe, so that, you know, you can see just how far I've come. Nice and quick, let's just get to it. I shouldn't ramble too much. For my updated chicken burrito recipe, this is going to be a sort of lazier take on chicken tinga, mainly because I use an Instapot and a blender. The star of the show are the Chipotle. Also, by the way, if you don't do well with spicy food, maybe don't make this. <laughs> got the chipotles on adobo, and then you get your veggies. You want some Roma tomatoes, some jalapenos, a white onion. I don't want to peel and cut my own garlic, so I just got this pre-minced garlic that you can just squeeze out of the bottle. Now then, right off the bat, I just came home from vacation with my, uh, with my parents, and they gave me this seasoning called chicken shit from Big Cock Ranch. This is what I will be seasoning with. You can get away with salt and pepper and maybe a little garlic powder. Apply a liberal coating of chicken shit and make sure it's even. All right, important step. Take your Instapot or your, or your pressure cooker, set it to saute, which will just heat up the bottom of the pan. Put some oil in there. While it's heating up, prepare the rest of your veggies and the sauce. Prepare your onion. I just cut it into strips. You could just mince it if you really want to. But I don't want to. And so I'm going to cut it into strips. I'm going to speed this part up so you can't see my knife skills and judge me accordingly. <gasps> Fuck! I'm going to go wash your jalapenos because the ones you got are scrungly as hell and also a little dirty and need to be washed. Take your jalapenos, cut the stems off. Just cut them up into little medallions. Before we throw all this into the uh, slow cooker, we gotta make the sauce. To start off with the sauce, grab a single Roma tomato, make sure it's washed and cleaned. Normally I do this with two Roma tomatoes, but it makes it kind of a little too saucy, a little too liquidy. So I'm gonna try it with only one. Pulse! So you get a nice little liquid there at the bottom. Then, get your can of chipotles in adobo sauce. They didn't have my usual brand today, yesterday. I was very bummed about it. Oh, this sauce is more liquidy than what I usually have. Oh no. Anyways, grab a fork, pour it all in there. Oh, look at that sauce. Now, what I'm going to do is, fucking hell. What I'm going to do is fill up this can with a little bit of water, swish it around, make sure I get all the adobo sauce out. If you wanted to, you could use chicken stock instead, just to give it a little bit more flavor. That feels like way too much liquid. Now then, for the last step with the sauce, we're going to add garlic. Now, because we live in a COVID-affected world, add as much garlic that you need to be affected. I genuinely don't know how much garlic that was. <laughs> All right, our sauce is blended. It is very liquidy, which is not what I wanted, but it is what it is. Flavor test here. Ooh, it's got some kick. I missed a tomato! These two tomatoes are for later. Don't worry about it. Now then, let's get to cooking the chicken. This part's very important. We're going to sear the chicken on both sides. We're not gonna cook it all the way through. We're just gonna sear it on both sides. Probably about one or two minutes on either side. Once that chicken's done searing, I'm just gonna throw everything in the pot and let it cook. And then at this stage, after everything's kind of warmed up a little bit, I like to add in two Roma tomatoes cut into quarter slices. Just lengthwise, one, and then two. Toss it on top, we're gonna add the sauce. Once you add the sauce in, I'd like to either A, use some chicken stock here again, or B, a little bit of water, to try and get as much sauce off the sides of the blender as possible. Give it a quick pulse, pick it up and shake it around, put it out the top. There we go. I'm gonna give this kind of a quick stir just to make sure everything's coated and we're good to go. We're going to seal up the pot, throw it on the pressure cooker setting, and leave it alone for like 30 minutes, maybe 40. It's on a batch to batch basis. Cancel the saute, put on the pressure cook, 16 minutes start. 
because we went from saute to pressure cook, I'm not going to explain how a pressure cooker works to you, actually. Never mind. <laughs> we'll be back in 40 minutes. During this time, I recommend you clean the blender and everything else. Keep the, uh, just rinse off the cutting boards. We're gonna need it here in a little bit. Also, real quick warning, if you do make this, um, you will essentially be pepper spraying yourself with the fumes. <laughs> 40 minutes later. Do look pretty good. But guess what? We're not done. Now we gotta shred the chicken and stir it back in there. If you don't shred the chicken, it's not chicken tinga. So, take two forks, shred. Doesn't have to be a very precise shred. And because it's pressure cooked, it's all soft and tender and easily pulled apart. Once we shred this chicken, like I said, we're gonna toss it back into the pot. The sauce and veggies are still there. All right, chicken shredded. Add chicken as carefully as you can back into the pot. Try not to let the juices escape out. Then, take your shredding forks and just give it a stir. Now, optionally, if you wanted to, you could also just continue to season this whole mixture right now even more. You didn't feel like the taste was exactly where you wanted it to be. <coughs> yeah, baby! Mm, woo. Oh, yeah. Now we have it all cooked up. All you gotta do is just pour this into like a Tupperware container, a bowl, and cover it with some ran wrap or whatever you want to do. This stays good for like a week. All you gotta do, put some cheese on a tortilla, put an amount of chicken tinga on the tortilla, make sure it's not enough to overflow. Throw it in the microwave, warm it up for about a minute, minute 15, and then wrap it on up and you're good to go. I may have overstuffed the tortilla just a little bit, very possible. Now then, this will probably burn the shit out of my mouth because it's very warm, but also very appealing. Normally I have bigger tortillas, but they were sold out of the bigger tortillas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, ah, yeah. <coughs> Woo, heesh. Smoky, spicy, a little bit of garlic in there as well. Probably could use more garlic, honestly. We'll say there's not as much as a hearty tomato flavor to this since I used one less, but it's constantly, I'm constantly experimenting with this recipe in order to get to the point where I want it to be. Still not perfect, but it's very good. Love it, very tasty, very easy to make. All I gotta do is just wash that pot now and we're good to go. Oh, yeah. I have eaten this every day for almost every meal for like a year it's great i will be licking the clay clean <coughs> right, there you go chicken tinga this will feed you for a week especially if you eat like two three burritos a day it's fantastic that's it stop yelling me about seasoning my chicken um goodbye <coughs>